Tonight's um, pr uh, program is Credit Rating IQ. Credit ratings have a, a lot of power because they hold a lot of information, a lot of personal information about how uh, Canadians pay their bills. Credit bureaus, well, there's two of them uh, in Canada, Equifax, and you can access them on their website, uh, and TransUnion. Equifax is in Montreal and uh, operates uh, through that. Uh, TransUnion is in Calgary, but they don't allow walk-in traffic. So they basically make, make their money from getting all the information from all the creditors who are their members. And then what they do is they sell that information to the people that may be in a position to grant you credit. So they make their money because these people, the members, pay fees to Equifax to be able to use that clearinghouse of information. So the idea here is the companies that are, uh, that are buying this information from Equifax and TransUnion are going to be making decisions on whether you get that particular job, an apartment, uh, whether you get the cell phone um, or uh, access to a bank account. So here's about how to get a copy of your credit report. The most common one being used right now is the website because it can be done instantaneously. Um, the most likely thing to cause a direct hit for you that will make sure that you get the, your own credit report, not somebody else's, is by using your social insurance number and your birth date. So you go to the website. If you want that instantaneous uh, piece of paper you're, that you can then print off, you're going to have to use a credit card that's in your name that's appearing on that credit file. So if you have the credit card and you want to do that, you want a copy of your credit rating, it'll cost you $16. If you want a copy of your credit rating and your credit score, it'll be a total of 24. If you get a copy of your credit report and there's, er there's errors in it, or there's some, uh, some things that should be on there that aren't, uh, then you can also go to um, uh, the website and you'll get one of these, it says a consumer cr a credit report update form and you'll basically identify to them what it is you want them to look at because, and investigate to make the change that you think should be there. Now, if for instance there's something on the credit report that may be true but there's, cir there's circumstances around it that you think should be explained, you can have up to 500 words in a, it's called a consumer statement. But if you open a bank account, let's say uh, at Scotiabank, and um, you sign a, uh, sign a form for them to be able to get your credit report so that you, to see how it looks like to open you a bank account, uh, well, you've actually told them that they can pull your credit report anytime they want because you've got the initial, um, you've got the initial check uh, approval. Unless you live in Quebec, all subsequent uh, credit checks and, uh, don't have to be authorized. Subsequent credit checks do not appear to the other creditors. They only appear to you. So you can see who's looking at your credit report by getting a copy of your own credit report. And anybody else, your cell phone company can get a copy of your credit report at any time with a soft inquiry to see uh, how you're doing with it and how you're doing with your other, th with your other creditors. If you've got a partner, a spouse, or you're uh, kind of tiptoeing around with your parents, uh, you'll each have your own credit rating. But anything that we've got that's joint will appear on his and mine. Now, you might have a credit card that both of you are using. It might be one person of primary card holders, so the per first person to apply, and then asks for a secondary card for the other partner. Although it may only show up on your credit report because you're the primary card holder, your, your, the spouse that's got the secondary card is equally responsible for 100% of the payment on that debt. So joint credit can appear on both, but you might not get both on uh, if it's a primary card holder. Each creditor reports every account separately. So CIBC doesn't say, oh, I think she's a three, or I think she's a one. They list everything, so they'll list your overdraft, your visa, your line of credit, your car loan, your mortgage. So uh, the length of time on the credit bureau is just one little piece of information that helps in the, in the assessment of whether you're going to be a good credit risk or not. Then you've got your name and any name changes if you've had your name and um, maiden name and such. SIN numbers and birth dates are partially blocked out now because of worried about uh, identity theft and things like that. They're also going to look at your current address and what, how, how many other times you've moved. And then of course they've got this current employers and previous employers. And then they may or may not have your spouse's name and occupation on there. 
every time you apply for credit, it's going to be a hit on your credit report as a hard inquiry. It takes three years for an inquiry to uh, disappear off your credit report. And if you've got more than five or so, uh, it looks like you might be looking for credit everywhere you're going being denied. So, uh, hard inquiries think you've authorized. Uh, all the creditors see these and it can negatively impact, like I said, if you've got more than five or six. If you've only got three on your credit report, they're not going to fall off after three years because uh, they're going to keep the first, the first five. Soft inquiries, these are the companies doing internal follow-up, uh, getting a copy of your own credit report. And uh, they don't appear, it doesn't show, this, the companies can't see uh, that you've been looking at your own credit report or that any of these other companies have been. And it basically has no impact on your credit score. If you've had a bankruptcy, uh, it'll take six years from the time of date of, uh, for a first time bankruptcy, six years from the date of the discharge uh, before it will be purged from the Equifax and TransUnion reports. Uh, judgments, well these are things where the, per the creditor has actually sued you and gone to court to register their debts with the court. If you've got student loans arrears on there, well it's government debt, uh, it's not well, uh, well, cons uh, well considered and it's, um, you won't be able to get any more student loan debts until these ones are paid. Uh, and consumer proposals done through a bankruptcy trustee or our program of orderly payment of debt, uh, they will be in the public records section as well. All of these things have a negative effect on your, your overall credit score. Collections act the same as a bankruptcy. A rating of nine is the, um, uh, the worst you can get. Um, the, um, uh, if you, a nine, a bankruptcy, is the same as the debt's gone to collections. And even if you pay that debt tomorrow uh, for that uh, creditor uh, that's in collections, it's still going to be on your credit report for six years. Uh, the thing is, if you've paid it though, it will show that there's a zero balance owing, which will be to your benefit as time wears on and it gets closer to the six years. These are examples of companies that frequently do, um, do go into collections. Uh, there's an important thing on your credit report. It's called DLA, date of last activity. That's, uh, it'll purge six years after the date of last activity and activity is considered when you acknowledge the debt or make a payment. And of course, OPD is the exception with just being two. There's three different types of credit that you can get, and each of the front letters are different. So an R is revolving credit, and that would be credit cards. It require you are able. There's a um, there's a balance owing at the end of each month, uh, and you have a, a set limit. So it, that's why it's revolving. It can go up and down within a certain limit. Uh, there's an O, which is for an open account. This is something like a cell phone, where the amount is actually can go up quite significantly, um, and it's open. There's no tr there's no limit on it, as such. And then an I is an installment. And that are th things like car loans, so things where you have a regular payment, uh, you've got a contract for a certain interest rate, a certain um, a monthly payment, and a certain term of time. So O1 is too new to rate. You may have a creditor who's willing to take a chance on you and they've given you a credit card with maybe a $500 limit and let's see how you do with it. Uh, and uh, so then after six months or a year of good behavior, they may uh, up, up rate you to an R1. Now an R1 is the best you can have. It's, um, it means that you're at least making your minimum monthly payment every month, and, or you could be paying out the whole thing each month. Now an R2, you're a month behind, R3, you're two months behind, and R3, four is three months behind, and R, R5 is at least 120 days overdue. There is no R6, because that once you get below there, you're now looking at some legal protection from your creditors or some legal involvement. So you may be making regular payments under consolidation order for a program like OPD or doing um, a, a consumer proposal where you're making monthly payments as well. Um, and uh, while, you're, while you're in these programs, you aren't allowed to have any new credit till the old creditors are paid. If you have a vehicle that's repossessed and there's money owing on it, you'll be responsible for the deficiency balance. Uh, and an R9 would be if it was a bad debt, it's uh, been placed with collections, uh, they can't find you, it's written off, or there's a bankruptcy. 
When it comes to a credit score, they're usually somewhere between 300 points and 900 points. Uh, it's impacted by a variety of factors as we looked in this credit report. She might, well, I'm going to go with an example. We've got uh, three people in the room that have the same four credit cards. A uh, person A, if I may, uh, has uh, these four credit cards and uh, he pays them off every month. Never carries a balance. I've got person B here who has the same four credit cards, always pays their minimum monthly balance, but uh, from time to time also pays off the whole debt. And then I've got person C. Person C has the same four credit cards and pays a minimum balance every month, but doesn't pay off the whole balance and is maxed out. So on a credit rating, where would those three people be? They would be perfect. Yeah, our ones. But a credit score is going to be different because of the way that you behave within, within those limits. So a typical credit score, 35% of my decision is going to be made up on are you paying your debts on time. You don't want to have mounds and mounds of credit because that will go against you. You want to have, if you have a couple of credit cards that are at half maximum, are better than having one credit card at its maximum. When I'm making my decision on whether I'm going to grant you credit, I'm going to say, well, part of my decision is on this, and a part of my decision is on this. When I add them all up, it comes to 100%, and I'll make a decision whether I'm going to decline you or accept you. Thanks you very much for coming, and appreciate your attentiveness. Thanks, guys.